Is upgrading the Lenovo Legion T5 pre-built PC a thing? In this video we'll check how does the BIOS look like and see what upgrade path does it offer. We'll try to see if we can upgrade the RAM and the CPU to the new AMD 5000 series. Let's have a look at the original configuration. It comes with an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X CPU. The motherboard is an OEM solution from Lenovo based on the B550 chipset. It comes with 16GB DDR4 memory from Samsung running at 3200MHz, but please note that there's no XMP profile in BIOS, but we'll touch on this later. And the GPU is a reference NVIDIA RTX 3070, and all is powered by a 550W bronze rated power supply. I have in hand two AMD CPUs that I would test, and I feel that would be an obvious upgrade. The Ryzen 9 3900X and, from the new 5000 series, the Ryzen 7 5800X. Ideally, I would test both of them, but the 3900X is the same generation as the included CPU and I'm pretty certain that this would work. My only worry is that the cooler which my unit came with, an impressive 60W TDP monster, will not provide adequate cooling for this 12-core 24-thread CPU. I am not worried about the motherboard via RAM, as Lenovo seems that did a pretty good job including some decent heat sinks to mitigate the heat. Also, there are a lot of videos out there with people who tested 3950X's CPUs on worse motherboard than this. So, I will start with the new and shiny Ryzen 7 5800X, which only has 8 core and 16 threads, but with a far better IPC and boost clocks. I also feel that this would be a better suited choice for a gaming PC, and a potential upgrade for you in the future. I have to give credits to Lenovo again here because of how simple it is to take off and put back together the CPU cooler. You just need to unscrew these spring screws and that's it. Make sure you do this in small steps uh, for each of these screws so that you don't leave or apply too much tension on one side. Same goes when you take it off. Moment of the truth now, let's see if it posts just like that or we need to do a BIOS update. And it's alive. Looks good so far, but let me quickly check how does it look like in CPU-Z and also I will start hardware info as well to check how the temps and power consumptions look like. It is nice to see that this PC offers a decent upgrade path for the future or for those who bought a unit with a lower end CPU like the Ryzen 5 3600 or something even weaker that there is a way to upgrade it. Please note that there's no XMP profile in the BIOS and if you change the memory or if you want to upgrade it, whatever you buy it will run at uh, its basic frequency which in most cases is 2133 or 2400 MHz. That's why you need to go and check for a me memory module which is GEDEC compatible and I learned that Crucial is one of the few manufacturers who offer this kind of RAM.
the 5800X is displayed properly in CPU Z. But most importantly is that the included Samsung RAM runs in dual channel at 3200 MHz, although at CL22, which are kind of high timings. Let's quickly use the CPU Z included benchmarking tool, uh, just to do a quick test and see what improvements can we expect from this uh, CPU upgrade. We'll do a comparison in single thread and multi-threaded workloads between the Ryzen 7 3700X and the 5800X. We can see that uh, in multi-threaded workloads the 5800X is uh, 17 to 20% faster while in single core workloads does 25% uh, better because of the superior IPC and boost clocks. Also, I use this tool to check how are the temps and the boost clocks at full load. We can clearly see that this cooler doesn't do any favors to the Ryzen 7 CPU. Now, going into the last part of the video, let's have a look at the BIOS. To enter the BIOS, you have to spam F1 or F2 keys while the PC is restarting and you'll end up uh, to a screen that looks like this. In the main menu of the BIOS you'll see your PC configuration, CPU and GPU at least, and you'll have access to some quick uh, settings like the boot device and how uh, your CPU should perform. Going to more settings, you can have a deeper dive into the BIOS and access some more settings among which I would mention the built-in overclocking function under the advanced tab. Also, if you are not sure what cooler you have, you can check this under the power tab. In my case, it is the basic air cooler, which has a 65 watts TDP. And the reason I don't want to check any kind of overclocking settings with this CPU, which has a 105 watts TDP rating. From what we can see here, this machine comes with 4 cooler types in total, ranging from 65 watts to 200 watts TDP. I cannot emphasize enough, when you order this PC, please check if you can upgrade the cooler up front. But if you ended up with the worst one, like I did, there's an aftermarket option that you can consider, and that is the Arctic Freezer 34, which supposedly fits perfectly on the motherboard CPU cooler mount. As always, thanks for your time. Stay safe, and see you in the next one.